Hello, Americans. This is Orson Welles. Tonight, CBS and the Mercury Theater bring you The Alphabet of the Islands. A. A is for the Americas, north, south, and central. A is for the Atlantic Ocean. A is for Africa. A is for adventure and adventure in the Antilles. Our great American archipelago, that's the subject of this broadcast. The Antilles are actually the peaks of a chain of great mountains which sank into the, the southern seas when time was young. I've been to a lot of islands, South Seas, East Indies, the Greek Islands, and the Mediterranean. The Thousand Islands, even the Manitous in Lake Michigan, and the Aran Islands off the coast of Ireland. Take my word for it, the islands of the Caribbean, the Antilles, are worth talking about. It's hard to know where to begin, so we're letting the alphabet decide it for us. The uh, alphabet of the Antilles. A is for Arawaks, the eaters of meal. Arawaks were the people Columbus found when he discovered America. Here's what he had to say about them. The savages are very free from wickedness. So gentle and affectionate are they that I swear there is no better people in the world. The men of Europe soon changed their good opinion of the first Americans in this early time. They are a barbarous sort of people. They conceived an incredible odium against us, more especially because they saw us take possession of their kingdoms and dominions. These are real quotes. One of the early colonists speaking. The greatest part of these Indians died in caves and subterraneous places of the woods and mountains. We made use of dogs to search for them. The Arawak language was as soft and no less liquid than Latin, rich in vowels and pleasant to the ear. Columbus again. Their discourse is ever sweet and gentle and accompanied with a smile. The Arawak people left us some words to remember them by. The words. Hammock. Canoe. Potato. Guava. Tobacco. The first word spoken to the discoverers by the Arawaks has not survived in our language. It is Taino. That's the first word Europe ever heard from America. After the white men had landed, some Arawak people approached them with that word. Taino. It means peace. A is for armadillos. They have armor. Armadillos are a kind of possum built like turtles. A is for anacondas, big snakes. These creatures live in the countries we're talking about. Angostura bitters come in a bottle from the island of Trinidad. Don't even know whether... Frank Morgan or Ralph Morgan, whose family owned the company, know what Angostura bitters are made of. The recipe is a secret and has been for generations. What to do with Angostura bitters, however, is no secret to anybody who can mix a drink. A is for arrowroot, used to make biscuits. Arrowroot is put in baby food. Angostura bitters is not. Uh, speaking of good things to drink. Yes? Curaçao, that exquisite liqueur, does not come from the island of Curaçao. Oh, thank you, miss, for the uh, interesting information. That's my line, interesting information. Oh. Curaçao comes from Europe. Anyway, it used to. It's made of the peel of an orange. The orange comes from Curaçao. Excuse me, but how did Curaçao get into the conversation? This is an alphabet, and we're still on the A's. Curaçao is part of the ABC Islands. That's right. A is for the ABC Islands. ABC stands for Aruba... Bonaire and Curaçao. The Dutch own the ABC Islands. Yes, that's right. Nowadays, Curaçao is a big center of oil refining. Well, that's important in this war. One of the first governors was Peter Stuyvesant. Later on, he was transferred to another island, an island off the coast of North America named New Amsterdam. The Indians called it... Manhattan? Correct. They paid for that real estate, didn't they? They got it cheap, $24 worth of glass beads. A is for advantage. A gun, for instance. That's an advantage. I once knew a gangster who had a good word for that kind of advantage. He called it an edge. We're sitting in a joint in Chicago in the old days, and I was talking about a famous mobster who had just recently been removed from this life. Tough. Tough? Was my gangster friend? Tough. Ain't no such thing as a tough guy. Ain't no tough guy. Just a guy with an edge. An edge is a rod. An edge is a few inches over the other guy. A couple more pounds, a longer reach. Being awake when the other guy's sleeping, that's an edge. Being smarter, being earlier, or faster. That's an edge. An edge is a mob, an edge is a bankroll. Nah. Ain't no such thing as that tough guy. For advantage, see edge under E. 
The men from Europe had something over the men in America. You can pick a word for it. Aeroplanes are a happier kind of advantage. A is for aeroplanes, which are bringing all the Americas closer together. B is for Bolero. Not Ravel's Bolero, which isn't a real Bolero, but the slow, sweet music you hear now. In our part of the world, we used to call this kind of a song a ballad. B is for birds. A lot of the ones you know spend their winters in the West Indies, which is nice for them. A lot of birds you don't know like it so much they stay down there the year round. The Kiskadee, for instance, which speaks in French and says, what's he talking about? And the Trogon and the sugar bird. All kinds of hummingbirds. Birds to sing, birds to look at. B is for beaches. A lot of the world's best slope into the Caribbean. One of the prettiest names in our part of the atlas begins with B, Barbados. I'm going to say that again because I like to. Barbados. And I'm not kidding you, George Washington slept there. He never forgot Barbados because he caught smallpox there as a boy and marked him for life. Barbados is British and so are the Bahamas. There are 2,000 Bahaman Islands. There are 3,000 Bahaman Islands. I can't find out which. Chief port is Nassau and the chief industries are tourists and sponges. Bimini is another island, another nice name beginning with B. Bimini. Uh, how do you like Boca Chica and Boca Grande? They're sea channels. Boca means mouth, so that would be big mouth and little mouth. Hitler and Mussolini, or rather vice versa. <laughs> uh, let's hear some more bees. Bananas? Bandanas. Bay rum. Balboa? Uh, Balboa was busy in the islands for some time, but he got into history because he went to the mainland, crossed the mountains, and discovered the Pacific Ocean. Of course, a lot of people had seen it before unless you don't count the Indians. B is also for bones. Bones belong in any West Indian alphabet. Columbus's bones, to name only a few, very well-traveled bones, Columbus's bones. They were buried in Spain, then dug up and moved to Santa Domingo here in the New World and dug up again, shipped off to Havana. But they sent the wrong bones. They sent them Diego's bones. Christopher Sun's bones. Also buried in Santa Domingo are the bones of the last of the Byzantine emperors, a quiet citizen named Ferdinando Paleologus. Something. Ferdinand was the last rightful ruler of Byzantium, the Roman Empire of the East. Only there wasn't any more Roman Empire by that time. It hadn't been for quite a while. The emperor, who was a vestryman at St. John's, went to his reward in 1678. B is also for birthplaces. It goes without saying that a lot of people were born around the Caribbean. Napoleon's Josephine was born on the islands, and so was Alexander Hamilton. Alexander Dumas, who wrote The Three Musketeers, had a West Indian grandmother. She was a Negro woman. Any more bees? Breadfruit, Captain Bly, and the bounty. Go ahead. They called him Breadfruit Bly. Uh, who did? The slaves on the islands. Breadfruit was slave food because it was cheap. Bly was on his way from the South Seas with breadfruit when they had that mutiny on the bounty. Made another try, and nowadays breadfruit plants grow all over the West Indies, as though they always had. Hmm, interesting. Yes, excuse me, Senor Wells. Uh, yes, Senor Valdez. Bees for your barn. Uh... Jawbone, B is for what? B is for jawbone, no? Uh, yes, B is for jawbone. Yeah. What jawbone? The jawbone of a donkey. Jawbone it's of a donkey. It's making shivering rather noise. You hear this? Yes, I certainly do. It's very interesting, isn't it? Huh? Samson killed a thousand Philistines with the jawbone of an ass. Today they use the same jawbone to kill the people. Babaloo. I beg your pardon? Babaloo. That's beginning with a B. That's right. Babalu, like a voodoo. Very queer, very beautiful. It is music from Cuba. Ladies and gentlemen, nobody sings music from Cuba better than Miguelito Valdez. All right, Miguelito. B is for... Babalu. Oh, 
de darme un cabo de tabaja con maya y un jarrito de aguardiente. De darme un poco de dinero maya pa' que no de la suerte. Yo quiero pedir, ay, que mi negra me quiera, que tenga dinero y que no se muera. Y yo le quiero pedir a papá Luz, ella una negra pimbona como tú, es que no tengo otro negro, es pa' que no se fuera. Papalú, 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 ay, mamá. Papalú, 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 ay, papá. Papalú, mamá, mamá, mi te recuerda por lo que quiere vender ti y te dice como pa' quintiamo como tipo que yo tengo su manera, me conoce mi mano, su poteo, su tabú, su teléfono, mi par, su capo, su capa, toro. Si viene gallero con vista, mamá, yo rompo la lista, si viene gallero, se quipeño, me dio ahorita con chichis, si viene gallero, bondrón, yo le parto corazón, que sueño, como te está comiendo mi caray, mamá, que si mañana yo me muero, ja, si mañana yo me muero, tierra manga, cosa buena, pero suelta, me pinta, me tarda, me quita, mamá, la más paga, riquilla, papalú, papá, es papalú, ay, es mamá, papalú, papalú, ay, Remember that song from Treasure Island? Treasure Island was in the West Indies, maybe still for all I know. And B is for Buccaneer. B is for the Brethren of the Coast, the Brotherhood of Pirates, which was the first professional organization in the New World. Their captains were elected by their crews, and no discipline was ever better. Before the pirates go out to sea, they join together in council to deliberate towards what place they shall go to seek their desperate fortune. Here are some more real quotes from history. In this council, the pirates set down what sums of money each particular person ought to have for that voyage. It is the law of the pirates, no prey, no pay. Among themselves, they are very civil and charitable to each other. The pirate captain Bartholomew Roberts was particularly strict. Lights out by 8 p.m., no gambling. Anyone who brings a woman aboard disguised as a man incurs the death penalty. So went the house rules. Captain Roberts drank only tea. Uh, no one contributed more to the lady pirate problem than Miss Anne Bonney, whose name begins with B. She hailed from Ireland, had married some sailor or other, and been deserted by him when she caught the eye of none other than Calico Joe Rackham. First thing he did was dress her up in man's clothes. She met Mary Reed on his boat, also in man's clothes. The girls got on well and fought side by side in every battle. When Rackham was captured, the men lost their nerve, but not the ladies. Piracy was a capital offense, but Mary Reed was philosophical. Hanging? It's no great hardship. Were it not for hanging, every cowardly fellow would turn pirate and so infest the seas that men of courage must starve. Captain Scarfield, Blueskin, Blackbeard, Redbeard, Cook, and Captain Kidd. There were pirates and pirates. Takes all kinds to make a world. Hawkins and Drake get onto the line as pirates, privateers they were actually, with letters of mark, a sort of hunting license for Spaniards, and it was always open season in the Caribbean. The Dutch pirate Roche Brasiliano hated Spaniards so much, he roasted them alive on a wooden spit. As a matter of fact, Spain was always the chief victim of pirate piracy and its chief motive. So the Spaniard claims the whole new world for himself, does he? <laughs> well... Just let him try to take it home with him. Think of pirates, and the first name you think of is Captain Kidd. He was an honest Scotch sailor until he was 50. Made only one voyage as a pirate. Peach is best remembered as Blackbeard. He stiffened his whiskers with wires, wove tallow wicks into them, and lighted them to make himself look horrible. He must have succeeded. Francois Lollinais once cut a prisoner's heart out of his body with his cutlass and then ate it. But Henry Morgan was the worst. Morgan. 
Morgan the Pirate. Mention a city to Henry Morgan. Say in his presence, Portobello. Portobello. Is it rich? Then I will relieve it of that yellow sickness that comes of too much Spanish gold. Portobello was rich. Portobello was Spanish. Henry Morgan loved gold and hated Spain. Well, then. I have nine vessels that will float before the breeze, and I have 500 men. The Spanish have gold, and they pat their bellies with complacence. Lads, we have business ahead of us. Rich Portobello fell easily. Put them to the torture, every one of them. Man, woman, and child. There is gold here. Squeeze it out of them. Use fire and render it out of them. But get it? Result. Morgan sailed away with lots of money. 250,000 pieces of eight. Ah. Now then. What about Panama City? She too is rich. <laughs> They abandoned their ships on the coast for the march across the isthmus to Panama. The march and its ends were infamous. But the deed was great. Fever. Devil take the fever. He can have the fever. I'll have Panama. Move. March. Move. These men had a madness. And there was a devilish method in all of it. We can take a man of war with a canoe. We can pick off a crew like frigate birds on a rail. We drive under her guns where they can't reach us. We can wedge her rudder and blow the brains out of the seaman who tries to fire at us from a port. We pick off the helmsman. The ship is helpless. We board. Give us one to their three and the ship's our prize. In a hollowed out log, Morgan's men would attack a 45-gun warship and take it. Took a twisted, fever-bitten strip of land to beat them. Heat, the jungle, harassing enemy troops, snakes, starvation. Hunger. Then eat. Eat beef. Never is beef of a kind to beggars, your saddlebags or leather. Eat them. This way, pound them soft in hot water. Pound your leather saddlebags to a pulp. Make a paste of them, then roast the pulp and eat it. And move. March. Get on. In Panama, the best soldiers and the finest artillery in Christendom waited for Morgan's coming. And thousands of raging, stamping bulls were corralled ready to be loosed in a living, bellowing avalanche on a little band of buccaneers when they came near enough. Alas, poor Morgan and Morgan's starving band came to the walls of powerful Panama. Canyon! Here's your choice. Live and surrender your gold. Or die and surrender your gold. We prefer the latter. We prefer the former. That blustering English dog, come on. Here's butter for you and your starving, eating bellies. Eat this! <laughs> Assault after assault, the pirates fling at the walls of the city. Again and again, the Spaniard, no less courageous than the pirate, throws him back. Then, a flight of dependable arrows rushes out amid the musketry. A pirate is hit. Oh. Pierced through from the back. Beard of a dog, they put a shaft in me. The oh. point of the arrow stands out from his bleeding chest. Bitterly, he seizes it, tears it, point first out of his chest. Oh. Now, now, Spain, you'll have back your bloody arrow. The wounded man wraps a bit of cotton around the arrow, places it carefully in his great pistol, aims it over the walls of the impregnable city. The arrow streaks out across the heavy leaden ball. The cotton bursts into flame from the searing powder. It falls on a thatched hut inside the walls. The fire leaps up, spreads, reaches the powder magazine. Breach. The walls were breached, then the Spanish juggernaut is loosed. Oh. Thousands of them, terrified, enraged, thunder through the breach. They are down on the pirate force. This was a coup de grace. This is finish on this. This would be the end of them. They'd be pounded to a scarlet pulp, no less. Henry Morgan sees them come. His jaw falls open. For a moment, his cutlass hangs limply at his side, and then reaction to the danger. Look. Look, lads, what bears down upon us. Beef. Fresh beef. Choose your creature, lads, and mind you pick a tender steak. Have at them. It was a merry barbecue. 
Morgan and his men ate heartily of roast juggernaut that night. Afterwards, they took the city. Henry Morgan was brave and colorful and shrewd. He was just as efficient and determined and successful a scoundrel as the centuries would produce for some time. His life is proof that if society lets it, crime does pay well. It's a point for all history and for current history to note and to beware. Finally, Henry Morgan retired from piracy and lived out his days as the governor of Jamaica. His government, grateful for his exploits against Spain, knighted him. He was very useful in the extermination of pirates. Now we come to sea. Sea is for conquest, the conquistadores. Sea is for cannon. Sea is for colonies. Sea is for civilization. For churches and crickets and cockfights. For clothes and casinos and canals. For craftsmanship and corruption. For cities and citizens. For Caracas on the Spanish main, where Bolivar was born. For Cuba and Columbus, who discovered it. Columbus thought Cuba was Japan. He made a notary fill out a paper swearing it was Japan. Then he figured out it was China. Sent a Jewish scholar who'd come with the expedition as an interpreter into the interior to deliver a letter to the great Khan. This place the natives call Cuba is somewhere off the coast of India. This I know because the sea comes here in a different manner from what it has done until now. Columbus had discovered the Gulf Stream. The Gulf Stream is a warm sea river 37 miles wide and a quarter of a mile deep. Its current swifter than that of any of the great rivers of the continent. Columbus, with his great capacity for hope, kept on hoping he was somewhere in the Orient, preferably India. That's why, as everybody knows, the first families of America are called Indians. The discoverer did his best to change the names of all the places which he claimed for Spain. Cuba, for instance. He baptized Cuba Buana, then Fernandino, then Santiago. Finally, Ava Maria. We, uh, we still call it Cuba. The men and women of Africa brought in chains to Cuba, kept with them the memory of moonlit jungle glades and clearings and the ceremony of drums. Evolution is a devious process. In modern Cuba, gentlemen of any racial background seeking public office often attract voters by playing congas in the streets. Practically where we came in. C is for conga. The, uh, the conga comes from the Congo. It comes to North America from Cuba via France. Three ocean crossings don't seem to have hurt it any, and up in our part of the hemisphere, we've added the conga line, like this. Ahora, footnote. Footnote to stimulating footnotes now being heard. The uh, conga, American style, is now danced in Cuba, and they call it the American conga. It may look like irony, but strong and useful alloys are made by the collaboration of many metals, constitutions that are like rocks, are made from the mixed voices of many people. Bridges span rivers and bays because they're anchored firmly on both shores. Give us universal music and universal dance. Common language and common understanding will follow. Need time and wisdom. Wisdom. Cuba's where they play a chain lightning game called Hialai, with the nerve and stamina that the game asks and the Cubans possess. They also play an exotic game called uh, Batibol, which is enormously popular on the island and is well thought of in Brooklyn also. Here, uh, here's a box score of a game of Batibol or baseball. Brillante pitching de Tuero, el catcher rojo, Miguel Ángel González cerró con doble llave la segunda base de los corredores americanos. Primer inning, Bucaneros, BP out in flyer catching. Terry Royen a show, out in primera, cocaína estrucao, no run, no hit, al centro. Merito muere en pitcher acueto en primera. <laughs> Segundo inning, Nicholson rolling a tercera, el sao al pretender robarse la segunda. Get it? Uh, Nicholson is out trying to steal second. He was safe a mile, and so forth. There is not, to my exact knowledge, a phrase 
Destroyo El Ampiro. It's uh, possible, though. Could be. Cuba. Cuba, the land of dazzling sunshine, of heroes and music, of sugarcane, mahogany, a message to Garcia, and Havana cigars. The uh, cigar as big business began only a hundred years ago as a source of solace and an instrument of diplomacy. Have a cigar? Some Havana cigars wholesale at as much as fifteen hundred dollars a thousand, or heaven help me, a dollar and a half a piece wholesale. A good cigar maker can make 200 cigars by hand in a day. Which brings us to the question, what is a good cigar? Well, a cigar is one thing you can judge by the wrapper. If the leaf runs straight along its length, it's a good cigar. It has a smooth, velvety feeling. When you flick off the ash, the glowing point is sharp. It's a good cigar. You can also tell whether it's a good cigar by smoking it. C is for Cuba, and C is also for Cubans, who lived longest under Spanish rule, which only made them more Cuban. They are formidable and fierce fighters for freedom. I, uh, I, I helped to build the Capitol building in La Habana. And a magnificent thing, too, senora. Uh, tell us more about it, though. Uh, well, the ceilings are gold leaf, no less. I know, I know, but, uh, get to the points. Uh, the diamond? Yes, the diamond. Ah, you mean the diamond. I buy it. Uh, what our friend is trying to avoid saying is that there's a splendid $16,000 diamond set in a block of polished onyx under the dome of the Capitol in Havana, and he helped to buy it. Uh, no, no. No, me. Um, uh, all the workers on the Capitol, when we build it, all... Uh, how you name it? Uh, uh, cheap in the kitty. Uh, we buy a fairly nice diamond. Oh, fair. $16,000. Not too bad. <laughs> Look, isn't the diamond set in a lump of gold before it's set in the onyx? Gold? Oh, yes, yes, of course, gold. What else? What else? People. It takes a lot of gold to make a setting for all that diamond, but do you know where the gold came from? From the fountain pen points of the contractors who built the capital. If the infinitesimal amount of gold in a pen point can add up to a heavy gold setting, then hairpins and old washers can add up to a medium tank. So much for that. Next week, we'll finish the alphabet of the islands. Good night, Americans. special series on the Other Americas, brought to you by the Columbia Broadcasting System and the Mercury Theater under the direction of Orson Welles. The Columbia Broadcasting System is the originator of South America's network of stations, La Cadena de las Americas. In the Southern Hemisphere, as well as in this hemisphere, CBS provides programs of news, entertainment, and recreation to bring about a closer understanding among Americans everywhere. Next week, the fifth program in this series will be brought to you by Orson Welles. Mr. Wells has recently returned from an eight months visit to the Latin American countries for the office of the Coordinator of Inter-American Affairs. In the cast tonight, Ray Collins played Morgan the Pirate, Agnes Moorhead was the useful information lady, and Ted Reed was the Cuban worker. Original music was written by Lucy Ann Morovic. Vlad Gluskin conducted the orchestra, and singing at this moment is our special guest, Miguelito oh, Valdez. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Oh, what a lava chango. 